Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there, folks. Welcome back. We are here today, episode 15, talking about... Legio Mix. Yeah, electronic mixing valves, the Legio Mix. Absolutely. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. So we get this a lot. Hey, I'm looking for a mixing valve. What do you have for me? You know, and we ask the, the question, what is your application? Or what product do you want me to cross it to? Many times it's either a large electronic from another company. Yeah, or a large thermostatic from another company or a high-low assembly. Yeah, high-lows, I mean, they're expensive. And a lot of times when we're getting this phone call, it's because they're replacing either a high-low or a thermostatic right. or they're trying to rebuild one. They're in the, maybe in the process of rebuilding one. They price out the parts and they go, man, that's really expensive. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So why do we use one? It's a motorized ball valve versus a thermostatic cartridge type, right? Absolutely. It's an electronic control with a sensor in the mixed outlet to measure your temperature versus that thermostatic cartridge. Yeah. So it's going to give you a higher maximum flow rate and in some cases a lower minimum flow rate. Yeah, most cases. Yeah. Depending on the application and what you really need. Right, right. Yeah. And you know what that, with that, three-way ball valve that we have it's going to be less maintenance as well it certainly is you start looking at all the shutters and springs and thermostatic element you know in comparison to a three-way ball valve that's gonna it's gonna be less maintenance for you absolutely they're more accurate they display real-time information right there on the control yeah it has the ability to send you an error code in the event of a failure Malfunction. sure it stores data um you know it logs 40 days worth of history, and it's, it has a battery backup. In fact, we had a company put one in, and they were having some trouble in the system, weren't they? They were. Yeah. Uh, they they called us, and basically what happened was one of the one of the system pumps went down. Yeah, well, it was interesting. I, I That was a tech call I took. So I remember talking to the technician on site, and you know, he, I said, okay, well, so you, what was the initial call? Okay, the initial call was, you know, we're losing hot water. Okay. Okay. Um, is the system working now? He's like, yeah, it's working. It's working great. It's been working great for almost a year since we put it in. And he said, suddenly we had a call two days in a row that they lost hot water. And I said, okay, well, that's interesting. I said, but it's back and it's working. Now it is. I said, well, let's go into the data log. I said, that thing stores a 40-day data log of, of water temperatures. And it's great for, you know, one, to be able to monitor how the control is working. One, for a liability issue, should somebody, you know, ever have a suit or be, get scalded or complain that the water right. was too hot or not hot enough. I said, so let's jump into the log and see what the log says. So two days in a row at 6 p.m., the temperature dropped. Interesting. And then it stayed down for, I believe it was about an hour and a half or two hours, and then went back to normal temperature. So weird. And it was 6 p.m. So I said, okay, so two days in a row at 6 p.m., you lost hot water and lost it for two hours, and it came back. What's happening in the building at 6 p.m.? Sure. So, yeah, they were able to track back to a maintenance crews on site and using, I believe it was a mop sink, <laughs> um, and they were determining determining that they had a cross connection and that was, that was affecting the performance. Sure. So when the maintenance crew went in to, say, go fill buckets of water and uh, do some cleaning, this is when this occurred. Right. Crazy. But but that history log was able to show them that. Sure. And if it were tied into a building automation system, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do through a building automation system. Right. You know, set yeah. it up through an alarm, um, monitor the system, 
change the temperature, all that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you can connect to the control with Modbus directly to our control. Sure. Uh, or with a Modbus to BACnet gateway, you can convert and communicate in BACnet. Absolutely. So that was uh, pretty much the benefits of it. Installing this thing. I mean, that's where we start to get all sorts of questions. That, that's where we tend to get a lot of calls is when the guys are installing it. Not not so much necessarily piping it, although we do get to get a fair amount of, of calls regarding piping, but yeah. more so when you get to the wiring and setup. Yeah, wiring and setup are usually the biggest hangups because let's be honest, if you're a plumber, you're not doing a whole lot of wiring in your in your days of field. You're doing more of the piping and and the delivery side right so i can see where this can be a little bit menacing to some because you have this box you got to get voltage to it and then once you get the voltage to it provided you get the right voltage to it and it works it it wires in 24 volts we provide a transformer with it you have to set the thing up too yeah well, with stepping back to wiring, I mean, you, yeah. you talk about it doesn't get any easier than a Legio mix to wire it. So let's look at it. So you have your step-down transformer that comes with the system. Yep. It converts from, you know, a multiple voltage in, inputs. Yeah, Either 240. 240 yep. Uh, 120, 277. It'll go up, I think, even as high as 408. Yeah. Down to 24 volts. Correct. So no matter what commercial uh, mechanical space you're working in, you should be able to find a power source where that can be connected. You may need an electrician to make the high voltage connection, but from there, uh, it's 24 volts down to our control. Right. Yep. Right in the terminal strips that plug right into the back of the control board, you know, that terminals 9 through 15, that block is your line, your neutral, and then your your four wires to go into your actuator. Right. Yep. So you have so you have your input voltage, and then you have your actuator. Yep. The output. Right. And I have that output voltage to your actuator. Then from there, you have a mixed outlet sensor and a return out, a return sensor. Yep. A return sensor. So those guys, once once they're wired in, you go into the menu. This thing is set up right out of the box to do basic electronic mixing. Absolutely. What's the number one? First thing you do when you open that control up, Greg? Well, and this is a big one, is that that battery switch. (laughs) That gets a lot of guys. That's that's another phone call we get is, hey, I got an alarm on this thing. It says uh, um, alarm battery. You got to flip that switch on so then it can start charging it. It takes about 36 hours to charge it fully, but in a few hours, that alarm will go away and the valve will be working normally. Now, getting into the menu, you get into the setup menu, and you have a few adjustments to make, don't we? You do. Yeah, before you get into that, um, what you'll do is you'll you'll get everything wired, you'll turn the battery on, like Greg said, and then you'll energize that, that, ac- that control. You'll set up your time and your date, and you'll set up country of origin, which is USA. Um, and then... Once you set that up, the valve is going to go into an anti-clog function. And an anti-clog function takes uh, 14 minutes to run. And then once that's done, and what it's doing is it's checking the, the actuator. It's moving the ball, rotating it all the way hot, all the way cold, all the way hot, all the way cold. It does that twice. Um, and it does that to make sure that it's free of, free in operation, that there's no debris in it. Right. Um, once that is complete, that's when it's going to going to go into the adjustment running mode and that's where you'll jump in and um, start making your changes sure so set one temperature that would be our mixed outlet temperature yes it would so right out of the box we have it set to 113 degrees just in case somebody would somehow skip that which very well could happen you know plumber goes pipes it in we do our job but the electrician hasn't been there yet electrician goes throws the juice to it it fires up and starts doing its own thing. The electrician walks away because he's none the wiser to what he's really supposed to do. He has to. power on. He's he got did power his part. on. He did his part. It's it's either the building maintenance guy's job or the plumber's going to have to come back and yep. do all the settings in it. 
So it's set to 113 degrees so when people don't burn themselves. Right. Yep. It's a safe temperature. Yep. But then you would take that temperature, make your adjustment to where you want it to be, and that's pretty much it for the electronic mixing side of it. Yeah, if you're, if you're just going to do temperature mixing, yep. right. But if you have a program in mind where you want to be able to do Legionella control, then you're going to be making adjustments to the set two and set three temperatures. Right. Right. Yep. And you're going to turn on that Legionella control. You know, this, this valve has the ability to do thermal disinfection. And you can set up through the, through the program how many days a week it's going to do that, what time of day it's going to do that, and what the temperatures of the supply outlet and the return outlet has to be. So, you know, it comes factory set up where for thermal disinfection, once you set the days and times, um, it comes factory set for 2 a.m. So from 2 to 3 a.m., it's going to do thermal disinfection. Um, and it comes factory set up at 140 degree outlet temperature with 135 degree coming back on the return. So it's going to kick into thermal disinfection mode. It's going to send 140 degree water out through your hot hot system, looking for 135 degree temperature on the return for 30 minutes of that one hour cycle. And that is to ensure that you've killed any Legionella bacteria. Yep. Once it sees that 135 on the return side for 30 minutes of that hour cycle, it determines that thermal disinfection has been completed. Sure. So here's one for you. What if they decided that they wanted 150 delivered to the system during that that particular program? They can change that. You just jump into the to the set max and bump it up to the 150. Okay. So theoretically it would take less time to disinfect a system at higher temperature it will yeah and i believe there's a chart in our installation manual that'll show you know based on you know the supply temperature how long it takes to complete the thermal disinfection cycle gotcha so going away from that there's also some other little tidbits in there auxiliary relays for instance to be able to maybe run a pump but Keep in mind, these are dry contact, right? Yeah, they're all dry meaning, contact. Meaning that this control does not provide voltage to those contacts. You have to provide 120 to power the pump or whatever voltage that pump runs off of. Right, yeah. Depending on how your system is designed, you know, if you're doing thermal disinfection, you need the recirc pump running. So, you know, we recommend running your recirc pump all the time. Right. Uh, that. You know, you're probably going to do that to make up your minimum flow rates. But say your system is designed where, you know what, your minimum flow rates are made, are already made up. So you don't need to run that recirc pump continuously and you have it on an aquastat or on a timer. You can bypass that through the relay and turn the pump on for thermal disinfection. Perfect. And then we have that anti-clog function too that's in there. Yep. And... I've seen people kind of get burned by that when their building automation system has, you know, s- some sort of safety put into it to keep people from being scalded because maybe they don't have anti-scald right. in that building. Now, you should have anti-scald, especially if you are doing thermal disinfection. Yeah, yeah if you're doing thermal disinfection, you have to have point-of-use mixing valves, sure. anti-scald protection. But if it is a worry, you can turn that anti-clog off. You can. Yep, you can jump in and turn it off. I recommend leaving it on. And all that's going to do is once a day, it's going to it's going to run an anti-clog cycle. I believe it's around, around midnight every day, unless you're doing thermal disinfection, um, where it's going to rotate the ball all the way hot, all the way cold, all the way hot, all the way cold. Takes, again, about 14 minutes to complete. Right. And then returns back to a mixed mode. So it tries sure. to do it in the middle of the night where the load's going to be low. So, right. you know, if you don't have uh, skull protection in place, you know, typically it's a short enough period where you're okay. Typically. And the ball's moving. Right. So, I mean, it is changing temperature throughout that. Yep. And you'll see that on the control if you're a control watcher. <laughs> you'll watch that some of up. them. Oh, yeah. And go down. How about sizing? I mean, Pipe sizing is always really critical on these, isn't it? 
Yeah, pipe sizing. Well, pipe sizing is important in every application. You know, one, you know, when you're sizing the mixing valve, you obviously want to know your minimum and maximum flow rates. Um, Like any product, you know, don't size based on pipe size, size based on flow requirements. Right. Typically, that's an engineered spec. And if you're in an old building, you might have to take a few steps back and, and really look at what you what your demand would be right right but then when you look at pipe sizing um it's not uncommon to see our piping or our valves piped with pipe connections coming to it you know maybe even twice the pipe size of the valve yeah it's i don't know how many applications i've seen they've uh you know emailed us pictures of the install and it's a one inch valve in a system with two to two and a half inch copper. Right. Yeah. Or three inch. Right. Or two inch valves with four inch copper coming to them. Right. Um, and you're really doing that to control the velocity in your piping. Right. Uh, the Copper Development Association and Uniform Plumbing Codes, they do not, they do not recommend exceeding five feet per second in copper. Right. Yep. They don't allow that for erosion, corrosion, to prevent erosion, cor- corrosion, or pinholing in your piping. Right. It just shortens the life of your piping if you're running too much velocity through it. Right. So that's where, you know, you don't, you look at a two inch valve, for example, you know, our two inch valve will flow up to 215 gallons per minute. Yep. At but a, 20 a two PSI drop. Right. But you try to run that through two inch piping and you're going to exceed that five feet per second velocity. Very much so. So that's where, you know, you may have to size up to like four inch copper and you run your four inch copper right up to the valve body. Yes. Right up to the valve body. And now um, your piping is protected at that higher flow rate. Right. And we've seen it too. That's another thing that that in some of those pictures, it's, you see the two inch piping and all of a sudden they come down with a set of elbows and then they drop to one inch. And when they go to one inch, if there's going to be a place of corrosion, erosion, corrosion, that's going to be it. Right. Absolutely. You know, and the thing is, we're talking copper when you're, we're talking velocity, but all of the piping material, you know, will operate at different velocities. Right, right. You know, I know, for example, like PEX piping will only operate at, or they only recommend two feet per second. Yeah, and then you'll see some assemblies done in stainless, and that's quite a bit higher. Yeah, stainless is quite a bit higher velocity. Well, I think we covered this pretty well. Yeah, it's a pretty good overview of the... Nijo Mix electronic mixing valve. All right. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.